in this video we will be discussing about zinc polycarboxylate cement so in zinc polycarboxylate cement we'll be covering the following subtopics the composition and chemistry bonding film thickness working time and setting time mechanical properties solubility various biological considerations for zinc polycarboxylate cement its manipulation surface preparation and the mode of removal of excess cement so before going into the details zinc polycarboxylate cement is the first cement which was introduced with a unique property of having chemical addition to tooth structure unlike other dental cements zinc polycarboxylate and gic have the potential to adhere to the tooth chemically and zinc polycarboxylate cement is also considered to be comparatively more biocompatible because of the molecular size of polyacrylic acid which is usually larger than that of dentinal tubules thereby causing minimal irritation to the pulp so we'll discuss all that in detail in the subsequent video and now coming on to the first subtopic that is composition and chemistry of zinc polycarboxylate cement so if you observe for any dental cement usually cements are available in powder and liquid forms so even zinc polycarboxylate cement is available in powder form and liquid form the powder chiefly contains zinc oxide magnesium oxide aluminum oxide bismuth oxide and stannous oxide it's stannic oxide and apart from this we even have stannous fluoride so powder basically contains various oxides of zinc magnesium aluminum bismuth and tin and also contains stannous fluoride so this stannous fluoride is very important it improves the mechanical properties of the cement and as you can see zinc oxide is the chief ingredient and the name of the cement is derived from zinc itself so apart from other ingredients as i said stannous fluoride plays an important role in improving the mechanical properties or strength of this cement so it can be considered as a filler and also as you can see here there is fluoride element here so zinc polycarboxylate cement has the ability to release fluoride but this release of fluoride is very minimal compared to other glass isomer cements or other fluoride releasing cements so this is about the powder composition of zinc polycarboxylate cement and coming to the liquid so liquid basically contains water so apart from water we chiefly have polyacrylic acid and we also have polyacrylic acid often copolymerized with other carboxylic acids such as itaconic acid so basically whether it's polyacrylic acid or itaconic acid these are polycarboxylic group of acids since they contain carboxylic groups cooh right and polyacrylic acid is the chief component of the liquid and it is present in a concentration of around 30 to 40 percent by weight and also the molecular weight of polyacrylic acid is very high it's in the range of 30000 to 50000 daltons so that's the reason why since it has greater molecular weight and a larger size these polyacrylic acids are known to block dentinal tubules thereby avoiding or preventing post op sensitivity and that's the reason why these cements are considered to be more biocompatible or tissue friendly right so this is about the composition of zinc polycarboxylate cement and if you observe the setting chemistry since this is an acid base reaction we have an acid in the liquid and zinc oxide base it's an acid base reaction so when powder and liquid are mixed the liquid component attacks the powder particles in one of my videos i have discussed setting mechanism of gic so similarly even here the acid component goes and attacks the powder particles leading to release of various cations such as zinc magnesium aluminum tin etc so these ions are released into the reaction medium and water serves as a reaction medium so so there is surface particle dissolution by polyacrylic acid and these ions which are released 
as a result of this acid attack go and cross link with various polyacrylic chains so the polyacrylic acid has numerous chains carboxylic groups etc so these are polycarboxylic chains right so the ions which are released into the reaction medium bind with the polycarboxylic groups so these metal ions help in cross linking of the entire matrix so as a result of which there is cross linking of these polycarboxylate chains leading to formation of amorphous gel like matrix and the set cement contains these cross link chains which are filled by various unreacted powder particles so the set matrix is an amorphous gel like structure which contains various unreacted powder particles so these act as fillers and contribute to the strength of the cement so this is the setting mechanism or setting chemistry of zinc polycarboxylate cement so basically it's an acid base reaction where an acid reacts with a base leading to formation of a salt this can be considered as a salt and obviously the byproduct in any acid base reaction would be water so here i've explained you the structure of the salt which is nothing but amorphous gel matrix cross linked matrix and this cross linking is happening because of various metal ions which are released into the reaction medium and now coming to bonding property of zinc polycarboxylate cement as we are saying that this is the first dental cement which has this adhesive property or ability to bind to tooth chemically so the bonding mechanism will more or less be the same once we understand the setting mechanism because in setting mechanism we have various metal ions which are cross linking various polycarboxylic acid chains so even when you place this material or cement on a tooth structure which chiefly contains calcium these calcium ions which are present within the tooth structure help in cross linking of these polycarboxylic chains so that's how an actual chemical bond is being formed between the zinc polycarboxylate cement and the tooth structure so it's clearly evident that in a given scenario the bonding to enamel would be obviously be greater than to that of dentin because enamel obviously contains greater inorganic content around 96 percent so the bond strength values of the cement to the enamel are greater compared to that of dentin now moving on to the next subtopic that is film thickness zinc polycarboxylate has this unique property of pseudo plasticity pseudo plasticity so when you say that a material is pseudo plastic inherently it doesn't have that plastic property or the ability to flow but under the influence of external forces there can be a momentary or temporary plasticity that can be termed as pseudo plasticity take for example zinc polycarboxylate cement an excellent example for a pseudo plastic material wherein when you keep on applying pressure on the cement either during spatulation or during a luting process of various processes because of increasing forces there can be decrease in viscosity of cement leading to increase in flow of the cement so as the pressure increases there will be a decrease in viscosity leading to increased flow of the cement so as a result of which this cement is ideally used as a luting agent the moment we mix the cement we manipulate the cement the viscosity seems to be much more or greater compared to zinc phosphate cement however when we apply pressure or forces there will be shear thinning or decrease in viscosity leading to increased flow of cement and that's the reason why it is used as a luting agent and according to ADA for a cement to act as a luting agent its film thickness should be less than 25 microns and we are able to achieve a film thickness of less than 25 microns using zinc polycarboxylate cement because of the property of pseudo plasticity and now coming to working time and setting time working time of zinc polycarboxylate cement is approximately 2.5 
minutes whereas setting time it's around six to nine minutes so in a clinical scenario we need to have increased working time so that it will be convenient for us to mix for adequate time and we need not rush up things and also setting time has to be as minimal as possible in a clinical scenario so working time can be increased in case of zinc polycarboxylate cement manipulation by two methods the first method is we can either cool the glass slab ideally we use a glass slab in order to manipulate the cement if in case we use a cool glass slab the issue is the liquid which contains polyacrylic acid it becomes more and more viscous because of this coolness the moment you drop liquid on the cool glass slab it becomes more viscous and it will be challenging for us to manipulate the cement so to overcome that we do not follow this method and in turn we follow a second method which is nothing but an alternative available method is cooling of your powder particles right so we'll place powder bottle in a refrigerator and then we use that refrigerated powder bottle powder particles to manipulate the cement so that the reaction occurs on the surface of the powder particles and because of the coolness of the surface of the powder particles there will be delay in working time right so this is how we can manage a working time or we can enhance or increase the working time of zinc polycarboxylate cement and now coming to various mechanical properties while discussing mechanical properties it will be easier for us to remember when we compare the mechanical properties with those of other cements also now coming to zinc polycarboxylate cements mechanical properties first one namely compressive strength the compressive strength of zinc polycarboxylate cement is lesser compared to zinc phosphate cement compressive strength values are around 55 to 60 mpa whereas for zinc phosphate it's around 100 mp so this is just for sake of comparison i'm writing here so the compressive strength of zinc polycarboxylate is way lesser compared to zinc phosphate cement coming to tensile strength it is comparatively higher than that of zinc phosphate right and then coming to modulus of elasticity or stiffness so the modulus of elasticity of zinc polycarboxylate cement is also lesser compared to zinc phosphate the values are around 2.4 to 4.4 gigapascals whereas in case of zinc phosphate cement the modulus of elasticity is around 13 to 14 gigapascals so this modulus of elasticity is nothing but the stiffness of the material so phosphate is more stiffer compared to polycarboxylate right and then coming to brittleness zinc polycarboxylate cement is not brittle compared to zinc phosphate cement zinc phosphate is much stronger and is brittle to understand what brittleness is if we take a piece of wood and a piece of glass so when you try to break it obviously glass breaks because of its brittle property compared to wood piece so that's how we can understand brittleness so similarly here zinc polycarboxylate is less brittle compared to zinc phosphate clinically translating this mechanical property is important if you understand this property clinically we can utilize it in removing excess cement for example if there is excess cement all over the crown after you lute a particular crown the excess cement can be removed easily with a sharp instrument if the cement is more brittle whereas if the cement is more pseudoplastic or flexible like in case of resin polycarboxylate cement it will be much more challenging for us to remove the excess cement right so that's how we can clinically correlate this property of brittleness so these are some of the mechanical properties of zinc polycarboxylate cement